exactly the same as he was the first day he stepped on campus here. He, he is really the most humble guy. Uh, and he's always been like that. It's just him. He's, he, he's, it hasn't, no, there's been, I think your question was, has he been different? No, but that's why he, he was chosen captain, uh, because of how he is. And he's been that way since day one. I mean, we knew five years ago when, when people were talking about him that, uh, and you listen to coaches, they talked about what an unbelievable leader he, he is. It's, it's just the way he is. So no, he hasn't changed one bit. Jake Starr. Hey, Coach. Hope all is going well. Uh, my question is kind of to add on to that previous one is you look at, obviously, Limoges, you look at it the Naples, you look at an Arnie. Uh, losing a lot of leaders from last year's team, how do you expect those three and the other older guys to kind of step up as leaders this year and fill the shoes of the guys who left? I think they're going to have a much harder job, mostly from what I talked about before, that there's very little action, little socializing from the team uh, away from the rink. So it's it, to get that team bonding and team camaraderie and, and really mo most importantly examples to show the way to show the younger guys how things how you represent yourself etc is a much more difficult job than it ever has been so i can't answer that question honestly i i, I think the world of all three of those guys uh, they were chosen by the team for a reason and the coaching staff agrees with it but it is going to be different leading this year than it ever has been because of the limited inter interaction that they have Dan Kelly. Hey, guy. Good to see and hear from you again. I um, was just curious. I see the you, you've got the St. Louis pipeline going again with the Christian Berger coming in. Um, how you know how does he compare? How's he looked and how's he compared to his brothers? Yeah, well, we have a couple of them. Uh, Jared Westcott's also uh, a St. Louis guy, but yeah, we've got the Berger pipeline going and, and very similar. They're all just such high quality guys. Um, yeah, they're they, they're cut from a very unique, impressive mold. Mold, and and Christian seems like, in all indications, he's very much similar to his brothers. Mark Wogenrich. Yeah, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much. I wonder if you could describe what a practice looks like right now, as compared to nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, whatever. Then you also mentioned the freshmen, their limited interaction. What are you replacing that with, that freshman to senior interaction with now? Yeah, well, so first of all, the practices, fortunately this week, we, we were able to get on as a, as a full team. So the only difference that you see is that the coaches are all wearing masks, the players are all wearing masks, everybody on the bench are wearing masks, and there's no whistles. Uh, they're electronic. Um, so that would be the main difference. And obviously when you when – you, bring players over the board normally everybody crowds around and they can hear you and here they got to stay far apart from each other so so it's a lot more spread out um and that's how it looks differently um but obviously a couple uh, weeks ago it was you know small groups uh we still are not in one locker room so the way you communicate is a lot different we're doing a lot of this the, the teams we communicate when we communicate with the group it's through zoom um, and that's how we have to do things. So when you suck, when you, your second part of the question was, what has it been replaced with? It's, it's really, it's, we, we take what we can get. Um, a lot of it has to do when they're together here at the rink, they're really excited, but it's not the same, but it's, it's what we have. So the zooms are really, uh, what we try, what we use to try get on the same page. Obviously it's not ideal, but it's safe. And that's what we're doing. Ben Jones. Um, if there was ever a sport that was ready to have one week before it had to play a regular season, it would, it would be college hockey because you guys have never really had that big, long run up. Is there an advantage there? And how much does this whole, I can't let any of these guys get sick aspect consume your mind more than, you know, really anything else that actually happens on the ice? Yeah. So the first question that the, the difference is Ben, is that in the past, a lot of, the uh, you know, they, they'd have captain's practices. So they would get a lot of skating and scrimmaging and playing. They really would. It, it wouldn't be official practices, but they would. And and this year, obviously, we've had zero because they, they, we don't have any extra ice where they can go. They're, they've all been in small groups until just recently. So we haven't had that. So th that, that's a little different. Um, in the past, you're right, we, we were able to play right away because they had so much time with each other and scrimmaging on their own. This is different. 
Um, so, so that's a little different. The, the second part of that question is it is consuming. It, you know, it's always on the forefront. I got to tell you, our staff, specifically Justin Rogers, um, our athletic trainer, has been just doing an unbelievable job and, and worked so many hours to, to in, just maximize our chances of, of, of staying healthy. And yes, everything, whether it's, whether it's eating, whether it's meeting, whether it's practicing, whether it's training off ice, it's, it's all you have to think in the back of your head. Are we doing all we can to be as safe as possible? Yes, it, it, it does consume us. That's for sure. Steve Sansel. Hey, Guy, how are you? Good. How are you, Steve? Good. Um, what have you done well so far to this point of the preseason and season, you think? And what are you struggling with in this different environment? Um, uh, the second part is easier. I'm struggling with a lot. I think it's a lot new. Um, we're trying to just be as, as positive and as fluid as possible, like being able to pivot on a dime because things are going to change. I think I will tell you, I'm not saying I'm been very good at it. I can tell you our staff has been excellent. Uh, Justin Rogers, who I mentioned has been just fantastic. Uh, Alex Dawes, a lot of this falls on him as well as being the operations. Like they've been able to, you know, pivot and change it. And the guys have been really, really positive. Um, and so I, I can't include myself on that. Uh, I think from the question before, a lot of it is always on the back of your mind and you're always wondering and looking. But I can tell you from a program standpoint, I really am impressed and appreciate with how the, the staff and, and the players have been able to stay positive when everything's so different. Randy Johnson. Yeah, hi, Guy. Uh, the Big Ten race last year, very tight. Uh, your team came out on top. You see it playing out that way this year? Very, very tight race again? I think so. Um, but I think there's obviously another big factor that we haven't had to deal with in the past. I, I, I think there's a possibility, obviously, of of canceled or postponed games, et cetera. That, so it's, it's hard for me to know exactly or to answer. I, I think if everything was was constant. Yeah. I, I think you're going to see that again. I think you're going to see that year in year out in the big 10. Um, they all have great players. They all have great coaching staffs. Their recruiting is great. Their programs are great. You know, man, it, it's tough. It's really tough. And, and that's, that's a good thing. But yes, I think if everything was constant, I, I see that trend continuing. Greg Cameron. Hi, Coach. Uh, I'm sure you are, you and everyone else are very excited to get going here, but is it extra motivating at all to draw Minnesota first, given the way last season ended and the matchup you guys were headed toward in March? Um, we're just really excited to get the season going. Grateful, I guess. Excited and grateful. Uh, a lot of people have done a lot of work and planning and, and operating and uh, a lot of resources on our behalf to give us a chance to play. And, and honestly, Right now, we're not looking. I think we're just very grateful to get the opportunity to play. And, 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 and really, it doesn't matter who right now. We're just very grateful that so many people are, are working so hard on our behalf to give us a chance to compete. And that's really what we're thinking about. So, um, you know, first and foremost, there was a question earlier about is it is it in the back of your mind? And it is like you, you it's all you're always thinking about it in the back of your mind that we're grateful for this opportunity and, and that's how it is right now like honestly our, our opponents i hope that changes i hope that transitions as we as we become more successful throughout the season of staying safe and playing i'm sure it will switch but right now i don't think we're worried or thinking so much about the opponent but very grateful that we get to play zach lambert uh, so the polls came out today, the coaches' polls, and you guys were ranked down at seventh. But in the national poll, you guys were ranked ninth nationally. Um, what have you said to the guys about this, and like, how do they feel about it? Well, look, I think I think I got a similar question last year when we were picked first, and I think the answer was when we were picked last before we didn't pay much mind. So it's not really fair to now pay much mind when we're picked first, and now we find ourselves on the other end. I think the answer stays the same. Um, the coaches were right about us last year. I hope they're wrong about us this year, but I do think that it speaks to the quality of the league. There was a question before about how you know tight it is um, from top to bottom, and when you have a team, you know, that's picked in the top ten nationally, but seventh in last in your league, I think it speaks to the quality of the whole league. That's how I feel about it. Acacia Broder. 
Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good. So I know you're talking earlier about how, um, I guess, different everything is with COVID right now. Some ways that you seem rising to the occasion and kind of almost breaking those kind of barriers down to get everyone included and kind of have that team bond. Practices have been really high energy because of that. I think because they don't get to spend much time with each other. Um, very, very little. So the, every time that you come to the rink and you get to get on the ice together, they, it's, it's, it's a privilege. Like it really is. And I know in past years you say it's a privilege to come and compete and practice. And, and this year it's absolutely felt that way every single day. So that's, I don't, I'm not saying that's one of the, that, that it's a design to do that. It's just really every time the guys get on the ice together, you can, you really can see that they're, they're excited to see each other. Again, we're in three different locker rooms. So they see each other, they, they come on the ice. That might be the only time they see each other. And that's been really energetic. So really, so far, that's, that's what we do. And it's, it, it's been a, an organic thing with the team, but it is fun to watch. Mark Wogenrich. Were you able to get any feedback, response, exit interview, anything from anybody in the NHL on how they handled uh, their season that you can apply to what you're doing now? A little bit tough because they were in a bubble scenario, which was which was um, a little bit different. But but along the same lines, though, I think one of the reasons that we've been successful so far and our athletic department has been pretty successful is is you know James Franklin has been very open with what works what doesn't and has been given all of the programs heads up on on things that you can expect and things that have worked and things that they were sort of i don't mean to say this you know they were first so they're doing a lot of we get to see what they do right and we get to get to hear fortunately coach franklin has been very honest with us which in ways where he feel we can do better than they they did and has been really upfront and honest with us uh, uh so that has been a that has been, we've used that experience more than the NHL experience. And I, and it's been very valuable. Ben Jones. It seems like across any sport that's playing right now, the teams that can do the basics really well, have a better chance of winning. To what degree do you maybe boil down your identity to maybe more fundamental parts uh, at, at this point, rather than trying to really expand on something? Yes, correct. That's what we're doing. Um, because, uh, and we, as a coaching staff, talked earlier in the summer um, when it looked like we were going to play that that's what we had to do. Like, we're not going to introduce a whole lot of new things uh, this year. We're going to really get back to the basics and our identity of what we do because, you know, with the, you, you, again, I mean, you're, you're preparing in small groups. Um, we understand we're going to have to continue to prepare often with guys that are going to be out for extended times. Um, so you're going to be playing without certain playing and practicing without certain players um, and the simpler the better that's how we feel